Good day guys, nice to have you here. Today we'll have a featured gameplay and same as always we will have this reviewed, discuss some tips, tricks and strategies in order for you to improve how you play Global Legends. With that being said, I give my shout outs to Blaze. Thank you so much for sending this gameplay. Great job playing as Argus, you are awesome. If you guys want to send in your gameplays, send me an email. Please note the videos are reviewed and not all submissions will be approved especially if the following requirements are not met. Playing Argus as a jungler has some advantages and disadvantages. Depending on the situation, I prefer Argus equipped with Inspire and played on the side lanes. With Inspire, his damage output is very powerful and can help him out get rid of multiple enemies while his ultimate is active. Being on the side lanes also gives him the chance to earn bonus gold by attacking the turret shield. On the other hand, if Argus is played as a jungler, you're sacrificing damage output by not having Inspire. But the good news is, Argus can reach level 4 faster as a jungler. On the side lanes, Argus takes about 1 minute and 40 seconds to about 2 minutes to reach level 4. But when he's played as a jungler, he can reach level 4 as early as 1 minute and 20 seconds into the game. In Mobile Legends, that's a huge difference. Being played as a jungler allows Argus to level up faster, thus giving him the edge of being more capable in clashes earlier, unlike the side lane Argus that reaches his potential much later in the game. Certain allies can also turn a jungler Argus into a very formidable hero. Allies such as Angela, Diggy, and of course, Florin. In this game, Blaze chose high and dry, which is good, but in my opinion, a better option would have been either Killing Spree or Demon Slayer. High and dry is an emblem that's most effective on lanes where you spend most of your time dueling one on one with an enemy hero since its effect only activates if there's only one enemy nearby. And since junglers are usually present in skirmishes against two or more enemies, high and dry's effect won't be activated as frequently as we want it to be. Having Killing Spree allows Argus to survive longer in team fights because of its high HP regeneration that gets rewarded after every kill. What makes that even more ideal in this game is the fact that three of their enemies have significantly smaller HP pools which means they're easier to kill than your typical dual tank or dual fighter lineup. Demon Slayer on the other hand would have given him a strong advantage in taking major objectives such as the turtle, the lord, and of course the turrets. Not only that, Demon Slayer can decrease Retribution's cooldown by 6 seconds as long as points are allocated to that emblem talent. You can also put points on Brutal, another emblem talent available only with Demon Slayer that provides bonus damage to jungle monsters. Welcome to Mobile Legends! Excellent job for heading straight to the purple buff in order to take advantage of the Lethal Wanderer once it appears. Sadly, their roamer decided to leash Mia the moment the game began, which in my opinion was a bad idea. There's really no good reason for a roamer to leash the gold laner that early since the odds of them getting ganked at level 1 is pretty low. Ideally, the moment the game begins, the roamer should aid the mid laner in clearing the minions fast in order for them to prepare in taking the Lethal Wanderer. The Lethal Wanderer is a very underrated jungle creep, but taking it is important. Number 1. There's only one Lethal Wanderer in the entire map, which means whoever takes it gains an upper hand in experience and gold. Remember that this is a very fast paced game and any gains, no matter how small, can still determine what the outcome will be. And number 2. The Lethal Wanderer becomes a stone roamer that provides vision to the team that kills the Lethal Wanderer. While it's true that the enemies can avoid it, in case a clash ensues around the stone roamer and your enemies are close to it, their locations will be revealed for a few seconds while they are escaping. And sometimes that's what'll help your team finish off an escaping enemy. Let's not forget that the hero that kills the Lethal Wanderer gets their movement speed boosted while going through the river. Once the Lethal Wanderer is taken down, that's the time the roamer can start leashing the marksmen since ganks on either sides of the lanes are expected to come from there on out.
It was a good idea for Blaze to stay in the side lane to gain more experience instead of recalling back to base since he was almost level 4. However, he played Argus with Retribution. I think he either forgot or miscalculated that rewards including XP gain from lane minions are reduced greatly for the first 5 minutes of the game when Retribution is equipped. It's not a very good start for their team, but always remember, sometimes what differentiates a great player from the good ones is how they can make up for their losses or mistakes. Stay tuned and watch how Blaze will recover from this game and carry the team to victory. Since Argus already had his ultimate, I think contesting the turtle would have been a better idea. But I guess the reason why Blaze was discouraged to do that was because his teammates were out of position. It was far too risky. When attacking with Argus, if his rage bar is full, I suggest launching one basic attack to trigger his enhanced attack. If you press his second skill fast enough, he will be able to hit his target with it before they escape or get outside of his range. Blaze knew that his team is lagging behind in both level and gold, so contesting objectives will be very risky, especially since Irithel was already fed so hard by Florin and Mia. So instead of going to the turtle, he decided to take some jungle camps instead. If Blaze contested an enemies from taking the turtle, Irithel might have gotten a triple kill which is a terrible thing to happen. Blaze is doing an excellent job defending. That was superb. He even got a kill from it. Outstanding lane pressure. He knew a lot of enemies were present at the top lane, so heading to the middle lane turret was the perfect play in that situation. Remember to always check the minimap as frequently as possible. Doing so will help you make better decisions. Mia also did a great job of reading the map which encouraged her to take the initiative in attacking the turtle. Things are going better for their team. At this point though, I probably would have just retreated since his allies won't be able to help him defeat Lapu Lapu considering that they were all level gapped. Lapu Lapu is exceptionally good in getting rid of multiple enemies because of his survivability and damage output especially when they have such a huge gap in level. Blaze is on his way in getting all of his key items that will get them to victory. With that being said, let's talk about the items he had in the game. Corrosion Sight in my opinion is now one of Argus core items. It provides all of the stats he needs in order to become an effective killer. From damage, attack speed, movement speed bonus, and it also slows down his praise movement which goes so well with his second skill. 
Demon Hunter Sword gives him a good starting damage against enemies thanks to its unique passive that provides bonus damage that scales based on how high his target's current HP is. It also gives bonus attack speed and of course, life steal which Argus needs in every game. Golden Staff is probably the best optional item for Argus right now, especially when Inspire is equipped. Not only does it improve Corrosion Sight and Demon Hunter Sword's effects, it also tremendously improves his attack speed. I believe having Golden Staff in this game was a necessity since Lapu Lapu is a very tanky fighter and as you have seen so far, Lapu Lapu was playing very well which only made sense to get items that worked well against him. He also got Wintalker to further improve his attack speed which in my opinion wasn't a bad idea. Despite being a critical item, it actually goes very well with Golden Staff because of the tremendous attack speed it gives. Also, another good reason to have it is for the tremendous bonus movement speed it provides. And finally, Malefic Roar, an item that penetrates physical defense, which was also an essential item in the game, especially since he sacrificed damage in exchange for attack speed when he got Wintalker. Excellent play. Blaze knows that Argus has a tremendous advantage over Aemon since he can prevent Aemon from utilizing his cloaking abilities effectively and he can also survive against his ultimate easily. That was a very aggressive and excellent play. This is very good lane pressure from Blaze. Believe it or not, this simple lane management is doing is the main reason why they won the game. Since two of his allies died, the enemies will be encouraged to take the Lord and since Blaze was not allowing the enemy minions to build up, they will be able to defend better against the Lord in case it is summoned by the enemies.
See? If Blaze didn't properly clear the lanes earlier, the Lord would have breached their turret immediately, causing tremendous damage to it or perhaps even destroying it. This only shows that he is playing the game to win. That was an awesome comeback. What other recommendations or suggestions do you have in mind that I might have missed? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe to the channel. Stay safe everyone. Peace.